ladies and gents, please like, comment, subscribe. My name's Ermy Reviews, and this is the recap for Real Housewives of Atlanta season 11, episode, what is it, episode 10 probably? Um, but anywho, let's just jump right into this. Actually, I have an announcement. Uh, I have a new channel. I'm starting a second channel, technically third. Um, it's called Romy Whispers Asthma or ASMR. Yes, I will be doing ASMR videos, reviews, unboxing, role plays, the whole gambit. So I'd appreciate it if you would help me out. <laughs> anyway, anyway, uh, yeah, that's going to be fun. That's going to be fun. I'm super excited about that. But let's talk about, I guess, some, and this episode was okay this particular episode was okay and i'm not doing it in order i'm doing it based off impact we can start with portia versus candy candy and portia do not like each other it's very clear it's evident and this whole thing of trying to get them together is not working portia is upset because she feels like why is candy consistently butting into the relationship even though they're trying to go make amends and trying to move forward candy is irritated because she feels like this is information that she's being told and most importantly then is clearly isn't telling Portia the full scope of his current dealings, his current interaction with other women, which is the real reason why Portia is upset. Now, what I will say is, I definitely think it's obvious that Dennis, he's out there still communicating. This isn't just that these women are interacting with him just to piss Portia off. Um, so they start to huff and puff. I'm thinking, Portia, you are pregnant. You actually cannot do this right now. And, you have, and you're high risk because you had issues um, before. So you, you need to calm down. They eventually separate them. Candy was going to leave. Uh, Candy was going to leave. And then Tanya said, no, we're about to eat. So then Candy sat right back down. She was still irritated, but she sat right back down like, I'm not missing a meal here. Tanya, then uh, Marlo comes along talks to Portia and Portia's biggest beef with Candy is just the fact that Candy didn't talk to her afterwards Candy didn't reach out to her try to figure out hey girl what's going on and Portia's hurt she's hurt and she's hurt because she thought that they were moving forward they were building a relationship and it turns out that you know the reality is that's not happening and I understand that. I understand that, but I think that what a lot of people kind of forget as well is Portia used to be really messy, used to meddle in other people's relationships, and so now it's coming back at her where she's like she wants this relationship to be good because she actually believes in it. Unfortunately, you get back what you put out, not all the time, but a lot of the time. And I get it that Candy said that she wanted to move forward with Portia, but Candy holds a grudge. So if anyone ever believed that in a moment, you guys are gullible. <laughs> Come on now. We know Candy can hold a grudge. She is the daughter of the lovely Miss Mama Joyce, who will hold a grudge like no other. Um, but then you, so they go downstairs and well actually Tanya brings she's wearing this really nice kimono um and she goes takes everyone to her hibachi room downstairs and it's nice it's nice it's the real deal and she had the chef there everyone was happy and then everyone was told they had to come back upstairs Shamari went in uh uh Candy and Shamari were both eating like there was no like they missed a couple of meals and they're like oh this food is tasty <laughs> Okay now, okay now. Shamari, Shamari, was just in there, you know. And then when she, and then when she got upstairs, she, she continued to eat, and I love it. I love to see women actually eat on these shows because a lot of times we don't see them eating, even though they're in restaurant settings. That always bugs me, and it's always a pet peeve of my period where I'm like, we're at dinner, eat something. <laughs> We're at lunch. Eat something. I don't care if you take three bites. Just eat something. <laughs> um, anyway, then they get told that, hey, Eva, Eva and I, we coordinate this because 
we wanted to take the girls out to Tokyo. And Eva said, you know, she does apologize to the rest of the ladies, and especially to Nini, because she did downplay something that clearly she wasn't thinking. She wasn't thinking she should have invited Nini. It was a major oversight. And so to make up for it, she wants to invite all of them out. And so Nini's happy. Everyone else is thrilled. They, they're going to go to Tokyo. It's going to be a nice time. And we're going to move forward from that. But Tanya also, I like Tanya. I like her personality. I really do. Like I said from the start, I like her personality. And I think she's refreshing on the show. She's refreshing. We don't need everyone to go and argue with everyone. We just need someone with an opinion. Someone who's not going to back down. And someone who is fun. She doesn't have to be messy because she's fun. See how that works? Um, anyway, uh... Yeah, she does apologize to Nini, and she said, you know, the comment, she knows that Nini was offended by it, so she does apologize because she didn't mean anything malicious. And me, Nini was still irritated. Nini said, oh, well, you know, you need help in the confessionals. Well, she needed help with her fashions anyway. That's why she came into um, her boutique, Nini's boutique, and, you know, clearly she was just on a low period, on a low budget. I said, I said Nini. Nini, are you still this mad? Are you really mad at this? Or are you just irritated because you brought her in and you think that, oh no, I brought in someone who's going to be an enemy of mine? That's what she's really upset. But Tanya deserves a peach. She really does. She does. I don't understand what happened. You tell me they couldn't give Shamari and Tanya a peach? Really? They're going on the girls' trip? Uh... <sighs> anyway, anyway. We go from that to, oh yeah, and Portia, at some point, she, she does bring up that the shady Eva, how she seems to love to forget her shade, and how Eva said something about Cynthia, and how Cynthia being a veteran, a veteran, which she did say that, she did say that, just because she said it in jest and not in malice doesn't mean that she didn't say it, and I think that's the problem with Eva, Eva, these ladies don't have a problem with you, I think they actually do like you, but you just have to be honest and upfront with what you're doing, if you said something in a shady moment, just acknowledge that, yeah, I did that, and move forward, that's it, that's really it, that's all, that's all you have to do. Um, and we go from that to... Well, where do we want to go next? Where do we want to go next? Um, let's go to Nini and Greg. Nini invites a new chef over because Greg wants a vegan and... What was it? Alkaline? What was it? A diet... And this chef, she can cook vegan food. That's not the issue. But Greg wants a specific diet because he doesn't want any foods that contains, I guess, any um, carcinogens. And there are some vegetables that do. And so she was saying certain things and he was saying that, no, no, that's that's not it. That's not right. Because uh, this is not just that, which is fine. The problem is she came in thinking that he just wanted a vegan menu. She was not made aware that he wanted a specific menu that didn't have any carcinogens or potential carcinogens for someone dealing with cancer or, you know, high risk of cancer. So you could tell she was a little irritated and caught off guard and shocked by um, the way how he was responding because I'm sure there are certain things that we didn't see. But and Nini was trying to be the person in the middle saying, hey, oh, yeah, she's good. She's qualified. And the chef rebounded and said, yes, I can do that. Let me prove it to you. And he, he was like, OK. But Greg was irritated because he had a doctor's appointment earlier that day. And he was unaware that they were going to, you know, stick him with six needles and do all this other stuff. So it wasn't a good day for him. And I'm sure his body is constantly fluctuating due to... Um, all the things that he has to do and we understand that but what a lot of people need to remember is that just like how the people around you have to be very understanding that they're going you're going through something that no one else hopefully understands firsthand you can't it doesn't give you the right to be mean and i think that's where a lot of people 
falter because they really are going through through something bad and hard and difficult in their minds it's almost like a, you're now my punching bag not intentionally but if i'm upset you have to be completely understanding and that's that no it's i understand uh, i'm still a person so what, what we're not going to do is you act different now we have uh now we have cynthia and mike they meet candy marlo and eva i thought this was a very odd pairing but Cynthia can pair with everyone as far as like film, which is why it's, which is why it, it just threw me off that she paired with them, but it's fine. It's fine. I guess everyone else is busy and they get, they got to ask Mike questions. Marlo asks questions about what's his credit score and if Cynthia's paying him, <laughs> he said, no, Cynthia's not paying him and he's good credit wise. And then she even asked, did he ever have an STD? Did, or does he have an STD or did he something like that and he was like or like what STD did you have previously and he was like Pre previously I don't have no <laughs> Candy was asking the sexual questions oh so what do you like to do in bed what's your favorite position with Cynthia you know do you hit it from the back do you go from the front like what what do you do so then he partially asked I answered you know while trying to maintain some cool and Eva was nice and she was just like so what made you fall in love with Cynthia what do you like most about Cynthia I said okay that was a nice pairing uh Portia and then the rest of the episode pretty much had to do with Portia Portia I already talked about Portia versus Candy um Portia goes to see Dr. Sherry and Dr. Sherry if you've watched reality TV before, especially the black stuff, you've most likely seen Dr. Sherry on uh, the Braxton Family Values, which is coming back. I was surprised. They're coming back, and I guess they're going to be better than ever. We'll see. Um, and Tamar's going to be, be on season two of CBS's Celebrity Big Brother, which I thought, oh, and so is Candy, which is going to be very interesting. I will watch, and I will review, because that's going to be a mess. I'm watching that. Trust. And How to Get Away with Murder comes back this Thursday. Thankfully, I follow Ashley Miller and she pointed that out. I said, what? All right. Portia talks about how, you know, the last time she saw Dr. Sherry was with Cordell and how that relationship was abusive and how she, because of that, it's shaped her as far as how she deals with Dennis and how she says that she hasn't been too combative with Dennis and she's just doted on him and she's like he dotes on her so it's no issue there but she doesn't ask him the hard questions she doesn't really question him she just kind of allows for things to progress the way how they're going to and Dr. Sherry said you need a real relationship you need to ask your significant other real questions you need to make sure that you are doing everything that you can to not have a repeat in any fashion even if it's you being super submissive you can't do that and Portia's like yeah she loves the person who she is now so she's not trying to backpedal and I said wow looking back at it we all said mm, that relationship wasn't going to last with Cordell but just looking at it through a different lens it looks even worse than it did back then now Portia and that's why my only thing is Portia, some of this blame that she's placing on other people, like Candy, Candy's doing whatever Candy's doing. But at the end of the day, Dennis is entertaining certain mess. And so then when Portia talks to Dennis, she tells him, look, I need for you to take ownership, even if it's just partial ownership of the fact that you cannot go and interact with these women. I had to find out and look and saw your phone that you text her you sent her a text you she, uh, n you know reply she reached out to you you replied back when we got together we acknowledged that we were going to be in a committed relationship that we weren't going to play this game of 
oh, well, you do your stuff. I'll do mine. He, 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 he. Ha, 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 ha. No, we said we were going to be in a committed relationship, cut our exes off. And even though you didn't hit her up first, you shouldn't have replied back. So then after she kind of said it a couple of times in different ways, then he said, you know what? You're right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for entertaining anything, especially with someone who is close to someone that you're not close to. And she said, okay, I accept your apology, but I do feel like you, you're you saying that just because you want me to move on, um, but not necessarily because you really see it the way that I see it. And I said, oh, look at Portia. Look at Portia growing up. So Portia, she's going to have to make a decision. Obviously, they're still together. Um, the baby isn't born yet, so that also plays a big part. Um, I think we all can agree that Dennis, he definitely kind of gives the... <laughs> like, I believe he loves and dotes on Portia, truly. But I also believe that when they got together and then she got pregnant, that he wasn't fully done with his exes or he's one of those guys who he still interacts with his exes not and let's say not even sexual let's say not even sexual but when you're in a new relationship there's certain things that end or are supposed to be cut off i don't know if dennis is the type of person who really does that so that's it please like comment subscribe i'm sure i missed something whatever i missed go forward and let me know um this was a filler episode anyway remember New channel, Romy Whispers. Um, ASMR or asthma. I'll have a video up soon. In video week over there, or two.